Hello, welcome to topic 1.1, uncertainties and measurement. So this one's super important and we talked about it just at the beginning, but we'll keep coming back to it all the time. So first of all, units of measurement. These are super important and we need to keep them in mind whenever we're working on things. And so back in the day, they had to kind of discover as a global community, once we started sharing everything, how do we all talk about the same thing and have the same language? So we created what's known as the SI system or this international system of units. There are seven fundamental units that they agreed on. These are the measurements. They just picked something and measured it. Um, you can look up what they all are. Um, and the six that you need to know in physics are the meter, which is a length mass, which is kilograms, time, which is seconds, electric current, which is measured in amperes, temperature, which is measured in kelvins, and amount of substance, which is measured in moles. So those are the six you need to know. If you're curious, the seventh one is known as a candela, and it's in its luminous intensity. Other types of units you'll run into are what we call derived units, which means they come from some combination of those fundamental units through mathematics. So for example, when you take a distance divided by a time, you get a meters per second. Um, and some of those, when you have a lot of combinations of letters, they kind of get renamed after a famous scientist because you people got lazy and they didn't want to write out all the letters all the time. Um, and so, for example, you may like know know that force is measured in newtons, and newtons are actually kilogram meters per second squared, but we represent them in newtons be to honor Isaac Newton as well as to make all of our writing out way easier. Um, and so an important note is that IB does not like you to do meters per second. They want you to have meters seconds to the negative one, and so whenever you have something in the bottom of a fraction, just multiply it by the top, but have it as a negative whatever exponent it is. So for example, if it were meters per second squared, it would be meters seconds to the negative two. And so make sure you keep that in mind as we go on. Another thing you're gonna run into a lot is what we call standard form. Um, so physics encompasses huge numbers and tiny numbers. And so in order to kind of make those annoyingly long numbers very easy to write now, we use something called scientific notation. Um, and so in your data booklet, one thing that you're going to have is you're going to have all the prefixes for sizes of numbers. So you are probably familiar with centimeters and kilometers. Those little prefixes in front of the meters actually say how big it is. So centimeters is hundredths of meters and kilometers is thousands of meters. Um, and those are all represented here in um, scientific notation, which means that it's some value times 10 to the whatever size it is. That means how many zeros there are after. And so for example, standard form is always gonna be in scientific notation. And so if I wanted to take this huge number and put it in scientific notation, I would place a decimal after the first digit, so it would be four point, and then there's I have to decide how many decimals of these are significant, which depends on what measurement tool I use. So for example, if I used a meter stick, which can measure all the way down to the millimeters, we're probably gonna have like four significant figures. Um, so it'd be 4.578. And then how many, how, how big is this number? I count after my decimal place, how many digits I have. So I would have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 digits. So this would be 4.578 times 10 to the 10th. Um, where do you round off those numbers? Again, has everything to do with scientific notation um, and what we call sig figs or significant figures. So this is based on what tool you use to measure. Um, so every tool has a different scale on it, um, saying what kind of numbers you can actually measure to. and the smaller the scale, the closer you are to what we would call the true answer, but it's never possible to get actually a true answer since there's always going to be some sort of uncertainty in everything. And so, for example, if you were measuring like some, some length like this marker and I had a ruler that can measure down to the millimeters. And so if I were to measure this at like 8.0, like five centimeters, 
There would be some uncertainty in my last kind of digit that I could think of because I could probably see if this is in between the eight point the five and the six millimeters, and I could guess is it eight point zero five eight, eight point zero five two. And I get to guess that last digit, but it's still something that I get to actually think about. And so I just represented eight, zero, five, and another number. So that's four numbers that I just represented using my tool. And that means I'll have four significant figures. And so whenever you're rounding, you need to kind of keep in mind those significant figures. This may not make sense until we do some practice with it. Um, for example, if you were given the number 3.2 centimeters, that means someone measured centimeters and guessed um, the next digit. And so if we wanted to find the circumference of something that was measured 3.2 centimeters to that precision, well, we know the formula for circumference is 2 pi r and radius is 3.2. And pi, well, pi has a lot of digits, but it's just an irrational number that Honestly, your calculator can give you the true value of pi. And so you don't have to round. And even if you did round at different places, when you do this calculation and you get 19.84 or 20.096 or 20.106, it really doesn't matter which rounding you did. Because since I started with two significant figures, which is not a lot of significant figures, just so you know, I can only give two back. So the answer, I have to round to two numbers to zero, 20 centimeters. And so I would have to round all of these up to two, which would give me 20 no matter which version of pi I used. So this is topic 1.1, just how do you measure and how do you kind of use tools? We will get into this a little bit more. Obviously, like I said, some of them don't make sense until you've done some examples. But if you need to see this video because you think it'll help you, you can watch it as many times as you think will help.